Hello. Going to uh, work through pH acids and buffers uh, for OCRB, that's the Salters course, uh, for A2 students. So, what I'll try and do is explain it for you um, so that it doesn't just become numbers, it has a little bit more of context and understanding behind it. That's my aim in this little uh, video discussion. So starting point is that acid is a substance that ionizes in water to donate a hydrogen ion H plus to a solution. pH is thus a measure of the concentration of these hydrogen ions. Now here are a couple of diagrams to represent uh, ionization. Top diagram is hydrochloric acid and the H plus that is donated combines with a water molecule and uh, there is a dative bond formed between the oxygen and the H plus and that forms a hydronium ion. Now in your textbook uh, you refer this to this as an oxonium ion. Um, an oxonium ion is actually any oxygen atom that forms a dative bond in this way within a molecule but this will refer to this as an oxonium ion in this example. Uh, equally down the bottom part of the page you've got a weak acid uh, partially ionizing to donate an H plus to water in the same way. So what we're looking at is the measure of H plus or the of H plus concentration or the concentration of hydronium ions, oxonium ions as well. Now very important then to understand that water ionizes uh, to a very limited degree but it does ionize and you can represent this uh, in many ways. Here's two examples the formo formation of the oxonium ion and the hydroxide ion or H plus and OH minus. A neutral solution of water has an equal number of H plus ions and OH minus ions so 10 to the minus 7 moles of H plus and 10 to the minus 7 moles of OH minus. If you add an acid to that water you will get proton donation so you get an increasing concentration of H plus. If you add a base you will get uh, protons accepted by the base or so removed from the solution or um, addition of hydroxide ions and the ratio of H plus to H minus changes and that's what give us, gives us our pH values. And just to mention at this point that uh, you can get a pH uh, beyond 14 uh, with concentrated strong alkalis like 2 molar sodium hydroxide for example and you can also get pH values below 0 from minus 1.5 for example for a concentrated strong acid. So this is what we're going to do uh, with our information. Once we understand how to work out the hydrogen ion concentration we can then work out pH because the pH is a log value. So you will, in your calculator you would just work out the log 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration uh, and then you would uh, remove the negative values from that which you would nor normally get. Uh, you can work these out actually or remember these values or work them out in your head uh, for simple concentrations. So for example if the concentration of H plus was 1 times 10 to the minus 1 that would be equivalent to pH 1. 1 times 10 to the minus 14 would be equivalent to pH 14. However any values in between that are going to be very difficult for you to work out so we use our calculator. So for example 5 times 10 to the minus 10 moles of H plus will give us a pH value of 9.3. Now, if you tried to work out the exact concentration of H plus ions, you'd find that too complicated. It's too complicated because you have the ionization of the acid, you have the ionization of water, and you have an interaction between the two. Therefore, to do these calculations, we have to make assumptions. And we'll mention these assumptions as we go through. So we'll start off with how do I work out the pH of a strong acid? Well the assumptions that we make are that the dissociation of water 
in the contribution of H plus ions is negligible, we ignore it, and the dissociation of the acid is complete, 100%. So all the H pluses come from the acid that we're talking about. So if we've got 0 0.01 mole per decimeter cubed of HCl, that will donate 0 0.01 moles per decimeter cubed of H plus. So the pH will be the negative log 10 of 0 0.01, which will give us value of pH 2. Uh, if we look at another acid, I've put this one in because it's a diprotic acid. One mole of, high, of H2SO4 will give you two moles of H+. So in my example at the bottom, we've got 0 0.002 moles per decimeter cubed of sulfuric acid, and that will donate 0.004 moles per decimeter cubed of H+. So that will give us negative log 10 of 0.004 pH 2.4. Well, that's fairly straightforward. What about alkalis? Well for alkalis we need to look at water first. So if we've got uh, this equation for water, water dissociates to H plus and OH minus, um, the H plus and the OH minus concentrations are equal and the concentration of water is so much greater that we can consider that to be a constant. Ka is the dissociation constant for this, or the acidity constant, if we're talking about acids. Um, if water is constant in this consideration, because pure water will have a constant concentration of, of, of water, we can actually have a special constant, which is called the ionic, the ionic product of water. Now the ionic product of water can be simplified to this equation and it is a concentration of H plus multiplied by the concentration of OH minus and that gives us a value of 10 to the minus 14. Now we can use that to allow us to calculate the pH of a strong alkali. So if we take this example, um, sodium hydroxide is going to dissociate 100%, so it's going to give us a full concentration of uh, OH minus ions. So, uh, in this example, 0 0.001 moles per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide will supply 0 0.001 moles per decimeter cubed of hydroxide ions. Now, we know that the ionic product of water is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And that is therefore going to be equivalent to the concentration of H plus multiplied by 0 0.001. If we re rearrange that equation, then what we get is that the hydrogen ion concentration equals Kw divided by 0 0.01. So the hydrogen ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 11. That gives us a pH of 11. Now I can remember when I was learning pH for the first time, I found that aspect, the, the, the concentration of alkali, too difficult using the ionic product of water. So uh, I always learned to do it a different way. And the alternative way to do it is to actually just pretend that OH minus is H plus. I was okay with strong acids. So work, work out the pOH. Um, so here's an example of how you would do that. So let's say there's 0 0.00038 moles per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide. That will give us 0 0.00038 moles per decimeter cubed of hydroxide ions. So if we pretend that if we pretend that is hydrogen ions, we just make a calculation that the pOH would be minus log 10 of the concentration of alkali and that gives us a pOH of 3.42. All we do therefore is we take that number away from 14 and that will give us a pH value of 10.58. So just calculate the pOH instead of pOH and subtract from 14 and that will give you your correct answer. Much easier as far as I'm concerned. Right, so we've done strong acids and strong bases. Let's go and have a look at weak acids. That's where it starts getting a bit more complicated. The pH of a weak acid. Um, right, a weak acid will only dissociate 
partially or only ionize partially but they ionize to a fixed proportion okay so we get a constant we get a constant level of uh, ratio of H pluses to concentration now that means that we get a constant value for a given acid so for ethanoic acid the acidity constant or dissociation constant is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 now that means that that value represents the concentration of H plus multiplied by the concentration of the conjugate base CH3COO minus divided by the concentration of the acid added now again we ignore water so we can say that the concentration of the H plus is equal to the concentration of the conjugate base because they came from the same original molecule and we also make the assumption that dissociation is minimal therefore the concentration of acid in the equation is the original concentration of acid if we make those two assumptions it allows us to have the following equation so for 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed of ethanoic acid the acidity constant is equal to the H plus concentration squared because H plus is the same as CH3COO minus and divided by the concentration of the acid so we get we get one unknown which is the H plus so if we solve for H plus that gives us the equation 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by the concentration equals H plus squared therefore the square root of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 times concentration equals H plus ion concentration so if I work that out that gives us a pH value of 3.04 So let's just recap then um, if we look at another example looking at the pH of a weak acid so what is the pH of 0.7 moles per decimeter cubed of weak acid anything okay so we're just giving the acid name of anything H um, and the acidity constant for that is 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7 so we know that 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7 equals H plus ion concentration multiplied by conjugate base concentration over concentration of acid. Now we also have from our assumptions know that that means it's equivalent to H plus squared over 0.7. So rearranging it. 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7 multiplied by concentration 0.7 equals h plus squared square root of 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7 times 0.7 will equal h plus concentration if you work that out for this example 0.000549 moles per decimeter cubed of h plus ions negative log of that gives us a pH of 3.26 right that is the end of the first part of this two-part video second part concentrates on buffers